Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel. And today I am no I'm behind. I wanna do a quick wrap up of my September reading. Uh, I can't tell you everything that I read in September because that would be giving away the Reading Woman Award. Uh, I uh, co-founded a podcast called Reading Woman. We have our book of the year kind of little episodes that we do uh, in November and December every year. So I've been reading for those. I just finished the last book for that on Sunday. So now I'm free to read for nonfiction November. I just posted my nonfiction November TBR last time, so I will link that down below. You can go check that out. Uh, but today we're talking about September, so to help me catch up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna give you my general impressions of some of the books that I thought were good, that were fine, etc. and then I'm gonna spend most of the time on the books uh, that I loved at the end. So, yes. All right, so books that I read, so two books that I read for the podcast that I enjoyed and talk a lot about there, so I will link those episodes down below, um, is An American Sunrise by Joy Harjo and Birdie by Tracy Lindbergh. Uh, I read these for the month that we did on Indigenous women writers uh, on Reading Women, and so Tracy Lindbergh uh, is pretty well known in the literary scene up in Canada. Uh, she's a First Nations woman uh, professor and all of the things, and this is about a woman named Birdie and just her just her experience living as a woman with a uh, mental illness of uh, passive abuse and trying to go to terms with everything. Um, it's a very difficult book to read in a lot of ways just because of all the difficulties that Birdie faces, but it's also very beautiful and it looks and celebrates the indigenous woman. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And I read it outside of all the hype that happened when it first came out. So I think that was also important because I didn't really have any expectations going into it. I will say that I've seen um, Thunderbird Woman Reads over on Instagram. She reviewed this one and, and really got me to pick it up. She really loved it. And she's also a First Nations woman in what is now Canada. And so I think it's a great, she did a great job with the review. I will link it down below. Um, but I also talked about this on Reading Women. So you can go check that out. And um, with An American Sunrise, I really thought she made history come alive. I think that this will be a great collection for high schoolers to read because she takes like different concepts from history and how the American government was just incredibly cruel and, and devastated the indigenous population. And she really takes moments in histories and laws that were put in place so that Native Americans could not celebrate or practice uh, their culture or religious uh, practices. And I think that it really makes the history of that come alive. So definitely go check those out. I will link the episodes down below. So I have three books that I'm not gonna talk about a ton because I thought they were fine um, or just fun or, or whatever. Um, the first one is Heaven My Home by Attica Walk. Uh, this is the second book in her Highway uh, 59 novel. So it's set in East Texas where Attica Walk is from. And it's about a, a black man who is a Texas Ranger. And at the end of the last book, things happened and he's trying to keep his marriage together. And uh, a lot of the crimes that he investigates are usually are really uh, racial, racially charged and so he's often sent by the, the rangers to go to those places to bring that unique perspective but it also means that he is in danger um, in different things. I, I thought this book was fine. I, I did not enjoy it as much as uh, Bluebird, Bluebird the first one. Uh, I think that this one just didn't come together. I didn't find it as interesting or riveting. Like I kind of expect a mystery to be a, a page turner in a sense that I want to know who committed the crime. In this case, who abducted this boy? Is he still alive? Like I want to know these things and I didn't find myself drawn to keep reading. I did because I wanted to finish it but I just didn't find it as interesting. I felt like the pacing was a bit off and I guessed who had committed the crime pretty early. It just didn't work in that way for me. Um, I thought it was fine. I will keep reading the series, but I just didn't enjoy it as much as Bluebird, Bluebird. One of the books that I enjoyed more than I enjoyed the first one is Victoria Schwab's Tunnel of Bones. Uh, this is the second book in her like Cassidy Blake series. Cassidy's parents are filming this show about ghosts and like doing kind of ghost hunting kind of documentary kind of shows. And she actually can see ghosts and her best friend is a ghost that only she can see. I enjoyed this one more than the first one. I remember I gave the other one kind of a meh review and people were very upset. <laughs> um, but I just enjoyed this one. I thought it was better than the first one. 
Sam read these like back to back and actually scared himself <laughs> reading these middle reader ghost stories and it was just fun. It's a fun little spooky book uh, if you want a break from the world and want a form of escapism that's kind of spooky, then this is it. So I really enjoyed the series uh, and we'll keep reading them because they're great. Also, the Hoopla has them on audio. The last one I read that was definitely interesting uh, is Gideon the Ninth. And this has been everywhere. I, I went and got the first edition with the black edges and everything. I will say like this book is so out there. It's about an entire like the, the world that they live in is like filled with necromancers and there are different houses that specialize in different types of necromancers and Gideon is like this one of the only children in the ninth house and so she is kind of like almost forced to go with the future ruler of the ninth house as like the bodyguard and so to go to this one planet where all of the houses have to like learn how to become immortal and it's like this big challenge and mystery and all of these things and it's almost like one of those locked room kind of murder mysteries where people start dying randomly <laughs> and you have to figure out like who who is it going to be and as people keep dying off you realize it's not them this is sort of like that it's so weird and wacky and the ending oh my word so it was really enjoyable i love books about necromancers oddly uh, ever since Sabriel by Garth Nix. So I really enjoyed this book. Uh, it's fun to listen to. It's kind of creepy and spooky and all of those things. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely go check it out. It's not something that I think will like make you start thinking about deep questions about life or anything, but it was fun and that's what I wanted from it. And so it was good for that. Hi, baby. Hi. How's that? Is that good? You want to say anything to your public? Yeah? You want to say anything to your fans? No? Just gonna sit here? Why do you want snuggles? You never want snuggles unless I'm filming. Are you done? Okay. Never wear a black shirt and have a corgi. Considering that most of my wardrobe is dark colors. <laughs> Alright, so one of the books that I read um, is Burn the Place by Elena Reagan. Um, and this is... Don't put your toys on books. <laughs> and this is a... <laughs> Wow, such attitude. Anyway, so this is a, her memoir. Um, Elena Reagan is a lesbian chef who uh, is like self-taught. And so I really love books about food. I love memoirs. This book was long listed for the National Book Award. I found it very interesting, um, but it was only okay for me. I felt like it was very disconnected. And all sentence level, she is a good writer but I really struggled with how this book felt like it was everywhere all at once and how her mind was everywhere all at once. And so while I enjoyed it, I thought it was good. I didn't really think it was great. It just really didn't work for me. I struggled to like maintain my attention in reading this book. I wasn't really turning the pages to try to figure out what happens in her life. I just found it okay. So I feel like that's kind of one of the worst books to review. Just okay, just okay books. Uh, I do find her fascinating as a person though and she is like the most badass looking chef like ever. It's true. But good for her for being long listed for the National Book Award for her first memoir and being that her career is a honored award-winning chef. Like that's fabulous. So another book that I read that I um, enjoyed um, and I think is very, the author's career is very promising. It's a tough room. A woman is no man. So this book looks at a Palestinian American family and the mother, Isra, moves in with her uh, in-laws and her new husband in this arranged marriage. She moves from Palestine to America and she has uh, a really difficult experience immigrating to the United States and, and getting into the culture there. And then there's also Dea, who is Isra's daughter, but we know that Isra is no longer in the picture. And we in, and Dea is being raised by her grandparents, Isra's in-laws. And so we don't know what happened. There's like this mysterious thing that happened to Dea's parents, to Isra and her husband, and we don't know what happened. So it's like kind of a mystery. It's definitely a family drama. I felt like it was well paced and it was very fascinating. I think this is a solid debut novel. I feel like it was unwieldy in different places, like a often a debut novel is, but I mean I feel like 
a tough room has so much promise if this is her first novel I'm very excited to see where she goes so I would recommend reading this um, if that's something that you'd be interested in I really enjoyed uh, Samaya's review of this book um, I will link a Q&A that she did with a tough room uh, down below you can go check that out but I finally um, got to this one this year so that's pretty cool all right so my favorite book uh, that I have read recently. Um, one of my favorite books of the year. It's a backlist book and not eligible for the reading awards, I could tell you that. Um, one of my favorite books this year is Mira Jacobs' The Sleepwalker's Guide to Dancing. Oh my word, this book is amazing. It's, it's a big novel, but it doesn't feel like it. It's a page turner. So this book follows Amina, who is the daughter of Indian uh, immigrants. And so she is in the present which is like 1998 to her and then you also go back to her childhood and we know that something dramatic like intense happened in her childhood that she has returned home to kind of come and deal with her mom calls her up and says something might be wrong with your dad you need to come home and then uh, so she flies down back to Albuquerque New Mexico to be with her parents so it goes back and forth with her uh, staying with her parents and then back to her childhood and a teenager with her brother and her parents uh, and just what it was like growing up in an Indian American family and oh my goodness this is so good this is so good there's so much depth to this novel and when you look at this Indian American family and what it is doing and just all the different characters are so alive and well-rounded. Kamala, who is Amina's mother, is such an interesting character. She hates movies so much because you know, even if the rom-com ends happily, she just creates endings for them. It's like, yeah, but they ended happily, but five years later, they got divorced. So why would you like that movie? And she has so many weird things. And Samaya calls it, Kamala creates her own truth. And I think that's so true. And uh, Thomas is the dad uh, of this family. And he moved from India because he's a brain surgeon and he had more opportunities in America than in India. And so Kamala always wanted to go back to India, uh, but Thomas did not. He liked being in America and he liked the life that he had there. And so when you have Amina as an adult come back to her home, she is returning home to find herself. So many books are about people leaving home to discover who they are, but for Amina, she has to come back home and experience her family. These characters, the dialogue is just spot on. It, the writing is tight and just ugh, perfect. And I love Mira Jacobs' storytelling. I love the quirky scenes that she has that make up a family. We all have family members that do super weird things. Or in case my family, I was the family member doing super weird things. I mean, you know, or my mom has the skill of never wearing matching pajamas ever. And also has a wide collection of animal inspired slippers. Like, you know, weird things like that. But in this book, you have Kamala and her movies. You have Thomas and his weird inventions uh, taking rotten fruits and vegetables from Kamala's garden and making a giant slingshot to go raccooning to shoot raccoons with these vegetables and fruits and things. It's so different and so interesting and I absolutely loved it. I loved how rich it was. I love this family and what they were, you know, all the weird things that they do and how there's so much depth to it that The Sleepwalker's Guide to Dancing, the title of the book, is plays out in so many different ways and it's beautiful alive and uh it's so good so samaya and i discussed this on the podcast was what samaya's discussion pick uh for october and so we uh talked about it so i will link the episodes down below i absolutely love this book it's just so fabulous i'm so glad i went and found a hardback copy on i think it was a books or something like trying to find uh, this book in hardback so i could keep it because i love mira jacob good talk is one of my favorite books of the year as well that was her most recent memoir it came out this year and so she's just a, gonna be an immediate pre-order kind of author for me now because she's just so good oh. someone recently told me that the kendra book hug is like the paul hollywood handshake so if kendra hugs a book it must mean it's really good i'll take it <laughs> 
All right, so those are the books that I read in September. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Have you read any of these books? Definitely let me know. I'm going to be following up uh, with some of the books that I read in October. But a lot of my wrap up is going to be in the Reading Win Award videos that will go up uh, around the same time that the episodes go up. So stay tuned for some of my favorite books of the year. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Mm -hmm.